All right, we'd like to call this meeting of the West Dallas West Milwaukee School District to order, please. Thank you so much for the patience while we started a little bit late. If we could please rise for the pledge, Mr. Uh, Lee, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. We will uh, do roll call in just a moment. Thank you, Suzette. We will do roll then, please. Yes. Mr. Bailey. Present. Mr. Lee. Here. Mrs. Justum. Here. Ms. Klug. Here. Mr. Sikich is excused. Mr. Ustrek. Here. Mr. Keller. Here. Mr. Schultz. Present. And President Emmons. Here. Proper notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the open meeting laws of the state of Wisconsin. All right, so item number five on our agenda for today. Um, is a discussion and possible action regarding uh, temporary suspension of board policies 171, 182, 183, 187, and 187 are the rule during an emergency situation. I'll now read that resolution into the record. Resolution suspending procedures during health emergency. Whereas a regular meeting of the West Dallas West Milwaukee School District, the district has been duly called and notice of the meeting published in accordance with Wisconsin Statute 120.11. Whereas on March 12th, 2020, Governor Evers declared a public health emergency in the state of Wisconsin related to the COVID-19 virus pandemic. In addition, on March 20th, 2020, Governor Evers ordered a ban on mass gatherings over 10 people and required social distancing and CDC and health department recommendations be followed for all gatherings. Areas of the country are issuing orders requiring residents to remain in their homes. Whereas the district school board agrees that in light of the current health and safety emergency, it is in the best interests of the district to immediately suspend requirements of board policies 171, 182, 183, 187, and 187R to allow for, during the course of the current health emergency, public access to board and committee meetings through live stream video, virtual methods and or video and or telephonic remote conferencing, authorizing the board president to restrict public comment periods at board meetings and or allow public comments through virtual methods and or video or telephonic remote conferencing, and to set the procedures for orderly operation of public comment periods when permitted through virtual methods, video or telephonic remote conferencing, authorizing board quorum requirements being met and board member attendance and voting being permitted through virtual methods and or video or telephonic remote conferencing and oral motions to be permitted and subsequently documented in writing and included in meeting minutes. Now, therefore, the proposed suspension of policies have been considered and the matter voted on at the March 23rd, 2020 regular board meeting. Be it resolved pursuant to the duties and authority granted to school boards under Wisconsin statute 120.12 and 120.13 that the district's board of education hereby approves the suspension of board policies as proposed and discussed at the regular meeting on March 23rd, 2020. Uh, this would be adopted at the regular meeting held on March 23rd, 2020. Are there any comments or questions? If not, we would look for a motion to uh, uh, approve the resolution as read into the record. So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any additional comments or questions? We will do a roll call vote on this to ensure that we capture everyone who is remote. Um, Suzette, if you could please call a roll call vote on a, uh, approving the resolution as read. Mr. Keller. Yes. Mr. Bailey. Yes. Ms. Klug. Yes. Mr. Lee. Yes. Mr. Schultz. Yes. Mr. Sikich is excused. Mrs. Justum. Yes. Mr. Ustrek. Yes. President Emmons. Yes. Thank you, everyone. All right, we will then move on to the remainder of the agenda. Item six, are there any additions or modifications to tonight's agenda? Dr. Lexman? I have none. Any other board members? Okay, we will move on. Um, item seven is our public comments for the evening. As of right now, we don't have anybody logged in to make public comments. You don't see anybody in there. So we'll wait about 10, 15 seconds or so, just to make sure that there isn't anybody on muting or anybody joining on that wanted to do that, just to make sure that we don't um, miss anyone's opportunity. So 
watching for live participation. Okay, we will go on then to the next item on the agenda, item eight, the superintendent's report. Dr. Lexman. Um, great, um, thank you, and thank you for the flexibility of the board and the community that maybe is watching as we make a transition, just like our schools recently have, to doing our work virtually. Um, so the legislative update, so it's the, the, the thing we're really paying attention to now in all of this is state revenue likely to be lower due to coronavirus. So according to the director of the Legislative Fiscal Bureau, Bob Lang, January projection that the state will take an additional eight, eight, $818.2 million through mid-2021 will almost certainly be lower than anticipated of due to COVID-19's impact on the economy. In a report released in January, the state projected it would pull in an additional $818.2 million in tax revenue for the 2019-2021 biennium. Uh, that resulted in a projection of an extra $451.9 million in the general fund at the end of the current biennium and a deposit of $409.1 million in the state's rainy day fund. So well, with that, sort of the, that additional revenue in mind, the GOP-controlled legislature passed a bill in February that would have used $392.4 million of the projected surplus to cut income taxes and property taxes for manufacturers, as well as pay down $100 million in state debt. Um, Governor uh, Evers vetoed the proposal saying the funds should go towards raising K-12 education to two-thirds state funding. So we're going to continue to watch as this evolves and develops. There's nothing um, new at the federal level at this time, but when I get to 8.3, just my items and updates, I'll address a little bit about how we're um, responding to this, even as early as right now. So let me go on to 8.2, so district recognitions. Uh, there's still a lot of great things going on in our uh, schools, even though you know they meet all over the place right now. So Jefferson Elementary, congratulations to first second grade teacher Paul Orgus. He has been selected as a 2020 Wisconsin Educator of Promise and will attend the 2020 Wisconsin Educator Leadership Rendezvous, rendezvous at Fort McCoy, July 21 and 20, 23, 2020. He will uh, be with educators and Wisconsin teachers of the year who are interested in developing their leadership skills to improve their schools, districts, and communities. At Shared Journeys, congratulations to uh, Marie Malvitz for receiving her certification for child care provider. Congratulations to Kaylee Breska, Lisa Kola, and Jenny Sal Salasinski for receiving their certificates for Environmental Essentials, Language and Reasoning, Environmental Essentials, Large Motor, and Infant and an Attachment and Bonding. And the next item, and I'm not going to read on all of the various kind of departments or groups or employees. The, the point of it and the point of making it public um, as we went through a transition to online learning, you know, it was not only um, that transition, but also a massive amount of organizing to do our technology distribution, um, the free meal distribution, which continues to evolve. Our first week, we doubled our meal distribution every day. Um, the kind of professional development and learning and staff planning that's also taking place and then a lot of work in communicating and holding all the pieces together. And I just want to thank absolutely everyone in the organization. Uh, this required work from everybody. We're still, you know, in, engaging with young people in their services through OTPT and speech pathologists and, and nurses um, responding to the needs of kids who are diabetic. All of that goes on even in the midst of us being virtual. So I just really wanted to um, you know, thank absolutely everybody that's been a part of this work so far. Um, going on to 8.3, uh, 8 there's some updates from, from me. In particular, um, following thank yous, I really want to thank Deidre Bramer and her team and Beth um, Kaler and her team. Those are the two kind of areas that we had to kind of coordinate across all of those things. Um, and I'll tell you um, personally, even Deidre knows the story a little bit, I've been working with her third grade grandson who's in a different district, uh, and he was with me today so we could try his online learning, and I finally figured out how Clever works. That's a login system, and got to Dreambox and got to his reading lesson, and I was getting frustrated, and he was getting frustrated, and there was no teacher to reach out to. And finally, he looked at me, he said, I'm done, I hate coronavirus. <laughs> That's where he stopped for the day in his learning. Um, and our kids 
are going on because they have really good support. So I just really want to thank folks. I want to thank Brandon for all the work he's done um, with our technology distribution. He's been setting up this meeting tonight. You know, we know there's kinks. Um, we're learning every day, and we're going to keep working through those. But I think we're in a good, pretty good place. Um, in response to the possible reduction, reduced revenue at the state level due to the economic impact of coronavirus, um, we are freezing spending immediately. Um, that's already been shared with department heads and principals, and we've established a review process for requests that you know a principal thinks is critical for what a teacher may be doing with online learning right now, which is different than what they may do in a regular classroom. So we have a process to review those requests. We've also postponed the teacher device replacement at this time. It was called for in a technology plan. Um, that's a large expenditure, and if we can't delay that until some of the dust settles, we think that's wise. Given that um, possibly next year, hopefully not, but in future years look like we'll have uh, reduced revenue and possibly even reductions in education funding in the state. And we think it's smart right now to build up um, the largest cushion we possibly can and still educate kids so that we have some flexibility on um, should we you know, need to use some fund balance to help us make, us make it through a couple of years that may be difficult. And then last thing, um, and this one, this one is kind of fun and interesting. Um, I've been getting questions from a number of our 12th grade students, and they're reaching out directly to me and making their case about why they should still have prom and why they should still yeah. have graduation, right? And, and responding by saying, at this point, that's not really up to me, but I certainly understand, you know, the value of those experiences. Our young people transition from 12th grade into college and career and adulthood, and what those things say about. Um, the moments of, of accomplishment. You know, I'm watching, there are universities that all have already said that we're just canceling graduation and some are trying to figure out is there a way to do a virtual graduation. So that's a little bit of a learning challenge I've given to myself. See, if we can't have a physical graduation, well, what is something that it resembles the experience look like? So, so we're even kind of forecasting and working on some of those pieces right now. And that concludes the superintendent's um, report. All right, thank you, Dr. Lexman. All right, we'll move on to item nine, the board president's report, which is a review of the calendar. Um, so uh, today, March 23rd, we have a regular board of education meeting, uh, albeit a non-traditional one, but board of education meeting nonetheless. Um, and immediately following, we do have a closed session meeting. Um, our next meeting is on April 13th at 6 p.m., a regular board of education meeting. Immediately following, we do have a workshop on enrollment and staffing and budget projections for 2020-2021. That still work goes on. Uh, April 20th, uh, starting at 6 p.m., we do have a closed session meeting. On Monday, April 27th, starting at 6 p.m., we have a regular Board of Education meeting, and newly elected board members will take office at that time. And immediately following, we will have a workshop on proposed 2020-2021 budget and preliminary tax levy number one. Um, do any board members have any community events or anything that they'd like to update? No? I'd just like to echo Dr. Lexman's um, kudos to all the staff that put together this um, really Herculean effort in a very, very short amount of time to be able to move every all this learning online and to be able to do it in such a way that it's useful. Um, I have two you know, kids in, in elementary school and they've been doing their stuff every day and you can definitely hear the exciting things our teachers are doing and stuff like that. So I would like to echo all the work that the, the staff, the teachers, administration, and also um, obviously IT to be able to make these things functional uh, in such a very small amount of time. Any other board members? I just wanted to thank real, uh, real quick Sodexo for uh, for holding the uh, future chef. Again, it was always uh, always awesome to be able to judge the kids. And, uh, it seems like every year they come up with something different and unique. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I do believe that there was a, a public notice sent out to families as well that um, to share their online learning, to share some of the things that they're doing at home to, by tagging WWM Proud in their social media posts, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, for the district to kind of pick up some of those fun things. I know my son has decided he wants to start baking, so he's been baking and going through all kinds of mm -hmm. dishes um, in our house. Um, so those kinds of fun things are kind of a side effect of all of this as well, um, but to continue to share those stories with everyone so we can you know, continue to do that. And someone had mentioned earlier, if you haven't had a chance to see um, the news yet or social media, um, I know Madison earlier today did a, like a, a parade around the neighborhood to all the, the families that were outside and kind of waving and all the staff drove through and 
waved at all their kids in their neighborhood in the neighborhood school uh, boundary. So kudos to the team over there and to the families who got to kind of wave and say hello to their, their teachers and their staff members. So thank you for all that's continuing to be done. Um, okay, so we will then move on to the consent agenda for this evening. Um, there are six items on today's consent agenda. Item 10.1, the approval of the minutes from the March 9th, 2020 regular Board of Education meeting. Item 10.2, the employment summary. Item 10.3, the supplementary contracts. Item 10.4, the financial summary. Item 10.5, the approval to issue 2020-2021 regular teacher contracts to eligible teachers. And item 10.6, preliminary non-renewal notice to teachers. Does anyone need anything separated? If not, we would look for a motion on all six items. Moved, moved and seconded. Great, awesome. Um, moved and seconded. Any additional comments or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, consent agenda passes. Um, okay, that is the end of the regular Board of Education meeting for this evening. We will take a quick minute, uh, five minute break. Um, so we can break down and go into executive session. So thank you everyone for your patience. Thank you for everyone who's watching at home. Um, and then board members, please click the other, you know, to, to get onto the executive session. So we'll talk to everybody in a few minutes. Thank you.